What if Goku was in Where did we leave our muscular hero last? Ah, that's right. He's inherited Shoto's estate and has become a pretty popular hero, devoted to saving as many lives as he can. But not even the mighty Goku can save everyone. Let's go back a bit. Goku was still a high school student attending the famous hero academy known as Yue. Since his adoptive father, Shoto, died before Goku could even turn 18, he couldn't legally inherit his estate. He would have to wait until adulthood to have any claim to his property. In the meantime, the estate would be temporarily held by the former number one hero, Endeavor. Endeavor also became Goku's legal guardian. While Endeavor had changed since his hero days, he resented Goku as he low-key blamed him for Shoto's death. The tension between these two got so bad that Goku honestly didn't even want to be in the same environment as his grandfather. Goku actually looked forward to going to school every day in order to get away from Endeavor. At school, Goku had quite a few friends. He got more popular after the incident with his father, but his best friend in the world was none other than Vegeta. Vegeta was the son of Ingenium and Kriati, two rich and popular pro heroes and both alumni of UA. They both decided to retire early for reasons unknown, and now their son, Vegeta, goes to UA. Vegeta inherited the engine quirk from his father, but it mutated into a transformation quirk. He can create engines within any part of his body and make the muffler stick out of anywhere too. He is limited to making two engines at a time though. Vegeta and Goku met during their first UA sports festival. These two boys dominated the competition, and in the end, Goku was able to defeat Vegeta and win the entire thing. But there were no harsh feelings, as this led to them becoming both rivals and the best of friends. But one day, Goku saw Vegeta talking to a really sketchy looking guy just before school started. When Goku questioned him about it, Vegeta just claimed that he was talking to his uncle, but Goku found that response odd since to his knowledge, Kriati was an only child and Ingenium's only brother was in no state to be walking. However, Goku did not want to doubt his best friend over what could just be nothing, so he let it go. But for the rest of the day, Goku just couldn't get this bad feeling out of his system. And that's when he remembered an important lesson that Shoto had taught him. It's okay to doubt your friends because in order to truly believe in them, you have to overcome that doubt. To say you believe someone without overcoming that doubt is simply just a lie. Goku decided that he had to make a plan. He couldn't just confront Vegeta with his suspicions without any additional evidence. So he tried to recall what he saw that day. It looked like Vegeta was showing the strange man his notebook, the one he usually either keeps on him or in his locker. Goku felt really bad about this, but he had to break into Vegeta's locker during lunchtime. The code was easy to remember as it was just his mother's birthday. 0923. Goku opened the locker and found the notebook. He flipped through the pages and discovered something strange. A lot of it was just regular notes for class, but some sections were just filled with notes on other students' abilities, strengths, weaknesses, and gear. If this information ever got out, it could give villains an advantage against the next generation of heroes. Goku wasn't sure what this all meant. It could be that Vegeta liked keeping notes to learn from other students or maybe just for fun. But then why would he be showing his notebook to such shady characters outside of school? Goku decided that he should try to casually bring this up in conversation. Hey Vegeta, Goku said, do you think it would be a good idea to take notes on other students in order to learn from their strengths and weaknesses perhaps? Then Vegeta gave Goku the most disturbing look he had ever seen. It sent chills down his spine and he honestly thought his life was over right then and there. But then Vegeta did his usual smirk and said, maybe, how would I know? At this point, Goku knew that Vegeta couldn't be trusted. He decided to go home early that day, and as he walked home, he tried to think of a plan. Did he have any allies he could rely on? Ever since his parents and Shoto died, he kinda lost all of his allies. The only person he had was Vegeta, but now even he couldn't be trusted. Just before Goku could make it back home, he felt a sharp pain in the back of his head. Someone kicked him, hard. And sure enough, it was Vegeta. I wish it wasn't you, Vegeta said. He knew that someone had been looking through his notebook, 
since he always kept it sealed with the strand of his hair. As soon as Goku brought up taking notes on other students, Vegeta immediately knew that it had to be him. Goku slowly started to lose consciousness, but then realized that he couldn't pass out now. If he did, who knew what Vegeta would do to him, or where he would even be taken? He transformed into his muscular form in order to avoid passing out. Goku then told Vegeta, it looks like I got no choice. I just gotta beat you and force you to tell me what the hell is going on. And then their battle began. Vegeta had the clear advantage when it came to speed, and since he could change the location of his engines, he had a lot of mobility. But Goku had some speed himself, not to mention he was pretty stacked with strength and durability while he was in his muscular form. And let's not forget the lasers he can shoot out of the palm of his hands. Goku was pretty confident in his ability to win this fight, especially since he beat Vegeta at the UA Sports Festival. While Vegeta did get in a lot of really good hits in, he ultimately couldn't keep up with Goku's monstrous strength, and he ended up getting knocked out. Goku ties Vegeta up and took him home for questioning. Goku woke Vegeta up and asked him why he was even doing all of this. Vegeta looked at Goku, and then he just started crying. He told him that he never wanted to turn on his friend, but he had to because he was finding out too much. The truth is that Vegeta was sent to attend UA as a spy for All for One. It wasn't something that Vegeta wanted to do, but he had no choice. Both of his parents were being held hostage, and not to mention his little brother, Tarbo. All for one took an interest in their family because Tarbo had a very unique quirk. The specifics of its capabilities were not clear, but he was able to make an entire city disappear and then reappear a whole week later. All for one attempted to steal that quirk, but it was too difficult for even him to control, so he decided to take his family hostage and train the boy's quirk on his own. Goku then asked Vegeta who was the shady man he was talking to earlier. Vegeta then explained that it really was his uncle. Somehow he was able to heal his legs with a unique procedure. Anyways, Vegeta apologized again and told Goku that he thought he would have to silence him in order to make sure his family was safe. Goku understood as he would do anything to protect his family if they were still alive. He untied Vegeta and told him that they were going to find and rescue both of his parents and his brother together. Crying even harder now, Vegeta said, I'm sorry, I should have told you about all of this sooner. Before leaving home, Goku considered telling Endeavor about the dangerous mission he was about to embark on. But considering how toxic he was, Goku decided that he wouldn't do that. He decided to leave a note though just in case anything went wrong, then at least he would know what happened. Goku and Vegeta made their way to a secret underground bunker that was owned by Vegeta's father. This is where Vegeta always assumed that All For One was keeping his parents. As they entered the base, they noticed certain things fresh foods, turned on lights, a hot kettle. It was clear that someone had been living down here for a while. It must have been all for one. There was a laptop at the center of the room. It was already on and there was a message on the screen. Incoming call. Accept or decline. Goku cautiously clicked on accept and the person who appeared on the screen was none other than all for one. He seemed quite amused that Goku had found this place and was a bit surprised to see that Vegeta had betrayed him. It didn't matter to him though, as Vegeta had already fulfilled his purpose. He said he would have killed the hostages, but fortunately, they were still of use to him. But then all for one said, Don't worry Vegeta, I have a different punishment in mind for you. That's when both Goku and Vegeta noticed that the entire bunker had been covered with dynamite. It was about to blow in less than 15 seconds, and they didn't have enough time to escape. All seemed hopeless, but then Vegeta picked up Goku and used his engines to start running. There was no way to make it out in time, but he was able to place Goku in a fridge. Vegeta, what about you? Goku screamed. But then... Like and subscribe for part 3.